All right, welcome back. And today we're just gonna do the usual. So let's just open the terrain. And where we were last time was we had a full terrain setup, and we had the bit masks that we set up in there. Now what I did was I made another terrain, and I just added it on the side. I'm gonna do something later. So just to show you how to add more details to a terrain if you wanted to. So in the beginning, what we're gonna do is um, we're actually gonna add bit masks and textures into it. So what I did was I downloaded a few textures from polyhaven.com and just um, a few ones that I liked, or maybe they made sense. Like one of these, one of these, a few of the terrain ones, and then once I was done with those pictures, I just exported them into um, desktop. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just click and drag and put it inside our asset browser. So now that it's here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to let it load for a few seconds. So once it's done loading, uh, we're going to use these textures to smack them into our map and how the hell do we do that okay so let's just go back to the object landscape and we see the landscape terrain here and we have our map and our masks so order does matter here but here's the best part you could just move the orders by using these arrow keys so first things first let's just choose a landscape data that we want to um, add a texture to so in my case right now let's just use flow inverse the flow inverse has a lot of data so all the white is gonna be where the masks are gonna be and all the black is gonna be where it's not so let's do it uh, I believe this was flow inverse yep so let's just click on flow inverse and then we press a plus that means we add a detail to it. Now in that detailing, we just have to press plus here. And now we have a landscape terrain detail mask. We can rename this, but I'll do that later. So now if we go to a texture, and we choose one that's most suited for this. In this case, I think the best suited would be the beach. I mean, this is a trial and error anyways. So then we add the displacement into the height texture field, and then we add the roughness into the roughness texture field. Now we can't see it because we're on helper mode, but if we turn it off, it shows. So now that we go down here, we notice that it's tiling way too obviously. So how do we fix this? Let's increase the size to like six removes a little bit of tiling and then we also increase the scale of the height which means that there's bump I think 0.6 does it nicely most of the time and it was too much 0.2 I said 2 not 1.2 okay that doesn't look bad I'm not gonna add anything to the roughness because it's not really reflecting that much so the higher the roughness let's say if I put the roughness to 4 the less there's light reflections <coughs> so I'm just gonna keep it to 4 and now we have a world that's fully sandy now here's the problem it's still texturing it's still tiling what the hell do we do so here's the beauty of it just click flow inverse map and just press plus again and now we have a double detail now here's the thing these details also overlap so putting this up will change the view of this now how are you gonna do that uh, mixing you use the th threshold and contrast masks so if I do this and then I do this you can notice that it's actually mixing between both the details so what I'm going to do for detail one is go back here just get out of here for detail one I might add another texture which is a little bit more I guess not rocky but more so I'm just gonna add that here 
add the displacement and then add oh it doesn't have a roughness oh well <laughs> let's change this to like I don't know 12 it looks good but it's covering way too much so we're just gonna move this up instead so that it only affects a little bit so now we can actually see a little bit of the, the effect under it we can click trip planner and what it does is it makes sure that the height fields are correct on bumps that are more mountainous but right now we don't need it so we got a little bit of flooring going right now and as you can see like the black parts it didn't even paint it on that so and it's okay it's just the first map when we add more maps it becomes a bit more proceduralized so this one is the flow map let's click on the flow map and check it out this would be the reverse of what we had so i believe it was a uh, flow map so let's just press plus on here and then we remove it and now we have areas that are in the smaller area the smaller sides now you can notice that we actually don't have a lot to work with especially with the flow inverse up here so if i just move this up now you can see that the original sandy thing that we have is not being heavily added into it so for this i'm just gonna go back press plus and now i have a landscape for the flow map so for the flow map let's just add something i i don't know i'll just add the round one i think it'll look okay yep add the roughness to the roughness and add the displacement to the displacement now let's just go in and check it out doesn't look bad let's add stuff into it so make the size into like eight looks good and then probably like 0.7 maybe like one who knows so let's see <coughs> so it doesn't look that bad we actually have it also like being smacked into some of the terrain over here and it doesn't look good at all so Let's just do two, probably not three. Three doesn't look too bad. Looks like it's over forced, but that's okay because nobody's actually looking into it. So, cause if you're running, let's say if you were actually in this as a video game, you're probably gonna look somewhere here. And if that looks a bit off to you, then you could fix it. So imagine you're actually walking on this terrain when you make this stuff. So over here, this looks a little bit off. So we're gonna make that into two. Let's see, it doesn't look off at all. Okay, that's perfect. Now let's just move the order and see if it's better. No, nope, it's not. Perfect, okay. So now we actually have an order that works perfectly well. Let's add thresholds and see if anything works. So this means, uh, the less wider it is so this would be like the less wider it is the less you affect it so in our case we actually want it to affect a lot and the contrast is the opposite so let's just give it a little bit more contrast and so now we actually did something i guess basic let's add uh, another map we'll just press plus and you won't see any difference because of one and only one reason this map the the flow inverse map what i was going to do is move the slow flow inverses all the way up and what that gives me is the ability to add more maps which are more detailed compared to the uh, background map so in our case rain erosions as you can see now you can actually see these rain erosion details so let me just press plus and now we have a detail i want to add one for the rain sediments too so we can actually see how it forms in our case not a bad idea at all so let's just uh, add a detail for this guy too putting random 
textures, checking which one looks good, which one looks bad. Uh, these were slope textures, so slope textures naturally have a rocky surface, so best to have some rocks. So over here it looked a little weird, so we added trip lettering and checked it out because the bends were just uh, making the rocks look awkward, but after the trip liner it worked, I also added a giant amount of skill, make it look more realistic. Now um, I muted a few masks just to see how it affects solo and then added the mask back in to check if it works properly. And again, this is rinse and repeat, so you just gotta keep doing it slowly finding it out and seeing what goes on to it <coughs> so what happened next was the slope inverse were areas where it wasn't slopey where it was more flat than usual so i added a little ground type grassy texture onto it so what we'll happen to do is uh, we'll make it into a uh, a mask for the grass and foliage and just natural foliage to hit on it now there's a contrast setting under the size uh, which I will play around with in detail one and what that does is it makes it uh, affect the extra mask by a certain amount so it gives you like little holes in some areas and you could just keep going on and on and adding as many as you like. I just took a few. I didn't use a lot of it. At the same time, I used a bit of it. So uh, one of the more important things is also color. Uh, you'll notice that it's very, very bright, this green color. So what I did was I muted it later on along with uh, the other mask that I added onto it. So in our case, uh, <coughs> I added the slope. In the slope, I added two masks. They're both the rocks, aerial rock one and four. And in that, I changed their size and I made it a bit bigger to make it look like it's more like boulders than small rocks on the slopes. So um, once I added those, trip planner those immediately, tri planner, trip planner, whichever you like. And then I muted the colors too, so it matches a little bit with the environment. Because if the environment's too bright for both of them, it, it'll just look off. So the current mood that we have is that it's a little muted in its coloring, and that's what we're... Now we have a world, and it's perfect. Now you see the tiling, and it's okay. Tilings don't matter. What matters is uh, whether you're allowed to put uh, trees or grass in it. So in our cases, we actually have nice little green patches here and there, and we didn't even have to manually do any of this. So these nice green little patches, what we can do is we can add, uh, we can add uh, lots of grass to it, and then these rocky patches, we can add rocks to it, and we can just do a mix of it here and there and that's the basics of bit masking now uh, let's go to the second terrain now when I told you that let's say you're not happy with the fact that you only have this much amount of train or that you're not happy with the fact that this area is not as good as you wanted it to be so what you could do is just press on this and then just uh, right click create landscape layer map and then now you could click on an area where you want to add an extra layer map onto this so let's do the same thing as usual you make the whole compression lossless blending uh oh wait uh, where are we data tile set perfect now with opacity this time we're going to use opacity uh and opacity this time is going to be an alpha blend uh for the height map we're just going to use the regular height map that we got. Uh, same height as the other one. This one, I believe, was a 50 alpha blend. And then the albedo, I'm just going to add this guy without anything. And then everything is just the same. If you don't want to add these, for the sake of time, I'm not going to add them. But let's say you did add them. Uh, apply, reimport data. All right, good. It added. Now, what are we going to do? Uh, we are going to make, let me see, this one's an order of zero, 
and then this one's in order of one. We're gonna change uh, where are we? Blending mode to additive, and now it added onto it. Now here's the problem you'll see, and you'll notice it right away. It's this cut. This is where the opacity height works. Now I don't really have one. I didn't make it, but I remember going into their files. They had a core texture brushes and they had some of these stuff so I'm just gonna use one of them like let's say if uh, we're gonna use let's say the pinch the white would be where it's gonna be uh, the height map will affect the other height map and then the more clear it gets i.e. the more transparent it gets the less it's gonna get affected so in this case we added this reimport the data and now it only affected in that small area so if I were to just press oh it didn't do nothing because we <laughs> we didn't do anything to this hide map yet but let's just normally you could move it but right now I can't oh well I will say let's go back to the high map and let's change the pinch DDS to like let's say softbox DDS and then re-import yes please and now it actually affected the map properly without actually having a cut so in our case let's say this map was supposed to be cut but what it did was it added on to the map itself so let me just uh, lower that height scale so now it's inside the map so if I were to remove it it will affect it by that much so so that's how you add another map onto a map to give it more of a detailing now you have more details so that's one of the ways to make details I so in terms of foliage you can use your own or you could go to add-ons take your scans and vegetation download them and once you finish downloading them you open them up and then you uh, click and drag individual items into the data asset browser it's not a good idea to just take the whole thing and import it uh, there's another way of doing it but for some reason C sharp just never works but press other actions configure projects and once you have the add-ons you just press add-ons here and whatever is available you just use it press ok and it's going to automatically uh, import them it works uh, it works 100% for C++ but for C sharp it just doesn't for some reason maybe it's just my computer but anyways yeah that's it um, we'll see you again next time